I played TAS past level 25, here's what I learned. On the surface, Tassadar is your classic long-range sustained magic damage dealer. The long range of his spells combined with no base defensive abilities incentivizes typical cowardly play from quick match mages. And fair enough, solo queue quick match is wild. But fortune favors the bold and Tassadar was no coward. Remember how he died? You gotta get in there. Unlike other mages, Tassadar has learned that auto attacks also make your numbers go up. An auto attacking mage? That's absurd! Hey, damage is damage. While this tickle beam might seem underwhelming, the ability to instantly apply a 15% slow on any target will punish immobile heroes and gives your team that slight edge it needs to catch enemies. Not only that, but the consistent damage ramps up and at full charge replenishes your mana pool. How much more incentive do you need? Doing damage enables doing more damage. Amazing. When it comes to fights, you should be looking for... Tassadar isn't as... He's not as... Eh. Okay, it's not as simple as it looks. You can't be timid, but you don't have the tools for a straight up fight. You're not a duelist, unless... No, not yet. Bait your friends. Just do it. They can complain when the enemy is dead. Because Tassadar is at his best in fights when he's being ignored. Duh. Since he's not as flashy as other mages, opponents might not initially see him as a threat. So you can use your superficial shrimpiness to position yourself aggressively, finding a spot where the range of your spells and attacks are just beyond where the battle is drifting. Tassadar is not a mobile hero, and you need to be ready to cast spells along avenues of retreat, cutting fleeing foes off with a last second wall, and and I cannot stress how important it is to keep that attack beam charged. You'll need as much mana as possible with the amount of spells Tassadar throws out. We should talk about those. Shock Ray is a long range, high damage skill shot that locks Tassadar in place when used. This immobility will be abused by shrewd opponents, so try to cast it when you know you won't be punished, whether that's poking at range or following up on crowd control. It goes without saying, but you should also be looking to hit as many targets as possible. Fighting around minion waves or near structures lets Tassadar double up on the damage value value with his spells, because the areas of effect affect everything in the areas. Psionic Storm is quite possibly the easiest spell to use in the game. Pushing W instantly zaps an area with lightning that lingers for three seconds. You do have quick cast on, right? Sure the damage doesn't happen all at once, but who cares? If that's what you're after, go play Kael'thas. The damage ramps up by 20% of the spell's base value every tick to a maximum of double damage. While the awareness of most gamers gets memed on pretty hard, people actually won't stand in the fire. You can use this spell to nudge people out of places you don't want them to be, and into places you do. One thing to keep in mind is that the damage of overlapping storms will not stack. Enemies can only take damage from one instance of psionic storm at a time. Given that there's talents that let you put out more lightning than Palpatine, know that it's better to cover a wider area than stack spells on top of each other. Force Wall is what makes or breaks a good Tassadar. On its own, the spell's not that great. But in a fight, the amount of disruption and control a well-placed wall can provide is to be respected. That said, you can very easily screw over your team. And your best intentions won't save you from the butt blasting your friends will give you after you cuck them out of guaranteed kills. The wall only lasts two seconds, but it can provide just enough space to alter the outcome of fights. It always spawns perpendicular to Tassadar's position, and if you're good enough, you can use it to peel people getting too personal with the Protoss. Black Hole gives Tassadar another strong zoning tool. After a quick channel, this spell travels slowly in a long line, sort of like Hanzo's Dragon Strike. Unlike Dragon Strike, the Black Hole draws people to its center, and, if successful, stuns them for 1.25 seconds. The spell is great follow-up, great zoning, good peel, and fantastic in tight areas. You can also use it to pin people to your wall. Archon is a bit different, turning Tassadar into a capable attack fighter. Yum. Activating this ultimate grants Tassadar 25% of his life as a shield and turns his attack beam into a splashing spell armor reducing lightning blast. Combining Archon and Tassadar's other auto attack talents turns him into a hybrid mage attack damage dealer and competent duelist. He's not immortal by any means, but the shields and damage Archon provides can potentially fight off cocky opponents and make them think twice about diving into your backline. The longer a fight goes on, the scarier Tassadar becomes. While he won't be getting explosive kills like Jaina or Kael'thas, his consistent damage and long range can chip away at his opponents, setting them up for some wild combos. He benefits greatly from auto attacks, and his unconventional utility can surprise unprepared opponents. Just get ready to die a lot. With how aggressive Tassadar must position and his near total lack of defensives and mobility, if the enemy really wants to kill you, they will. Once you get the hang of them though, you'll be able to put out consistently high damage numbers while minimizing the amount of heroic sacrifices. 